Not all cosmic neighbors play nice. Some stars eventually eat their companions. After decades of watching, waiting, and wondering, astronomers have finally laid eyes on the elusive partner of the legendary star, Betelgeuse. Scientists believe Betelgeuse might one day devour it in a cosmic act of cannibalism. Now, before you picture that in gruesome detail, let's talk about why this matters. Imagine for a moment a star near us suddenly detonating in a supernova, a brilliant burst of light and energy ripping across the night sky. Sounds thrilling, right? But also a little terrifying. And it's not just science fiction. About 2.6 million years ago, this really happened. A star exploded just 150 light years away from Earth close enough that its effects may have triggered a mass extinction, wiping out many of Earth's large marine animals. Luckily, our own sun is a model citizen in the stellar neighborhood, stable, middle-aged, and not scheduled for a fiery end for billions of years. But not every star plays by those rules. Some are far larger, burn hotter, and live shorter, more violent lives. And when their time's up, they go out in spectacular, destructive style. And here's the kicker. Some of those ticking time bombs are relatively nearby. Stars like Spica, Antares, and Rigel could all blow in the distant future. They're hundreds of light years away, so Earth wouldn't be fried, but their death throes would be so bright they could outshine the moon for weeks. Among them, Betelgeuse is the drama queen of the cosmos. This hulking red supergiant in Orion is around 642 light years away, which means the light you see from it tonight actually left the star roughly six centuries ago. We don't know its exact distance. Astronomy still has its mysteries, but here's a mind bender. Betelgeuse could have exploded already centuries back, and the light of that cataclysm just hasn't reached us yet. Tomorrow's sunset could be followed by a night sky hijacked by the glow of a star's violent death. But here's the frustrating part. No one knows when it will happen. Betelgeuse has been behaving strangely for years, showing bizarre fluctuations that have some experts on edge. And the deeper scientists look, the stranger it gets. Recently, an advanced space observatory delivered a fresh, crystal clear image of Betelgeuse, and it revealed something stunning. The star has dimmed in three distinct ways, each triggered by a completely different cause. The most jaw-dropping event the so-called Great Dimming, when Betelgeuse suddenly lost 35% of its brightness. That kind of sudden fade is no small matter for a star. It's the kind of change that makes astronomers sit up and say, wait, something's seriously wrong here. Stars simply don't dim that much without a big reason. At first, it was pure mystery, an unsettling one. But after poring over the data, scientists cracked the case. Betelgeuse had coughed out an enormous cloud of dust from its own surface. That dusty veil drifted across our line of sight, cooled, and blocked part of the star's glow. From Earth, Betelgeuse looked like it had lost a third of its brilliance almost overnight. But that's only one piece of the puzzle. The second dimming pattern is far more personal. Every 400 days, Betelgeuse's light subtly rises and falls, not because of dust, but because of something deep within. You see, red supergiants like Betelgeuse are restless giants. They expand and contract in slow, deliberate pulses, almost like a heartbeat you can't quite hear, but can still feel. With each rhythmic swell and shrink of its outer layers, the star's brightness shifts in a steady cycle. This 400-day pulse is essentially Betelgeuse's signature rhythm, and for astronomers, it's like listening to the drumbeat of the star's life. Sometimes, changes in this pulse can signal that a star is inching toward its grand finale, a supernova. On its own, this pulse doesn't mean Betelgeuse is about to erupt tomorrow, but it could be the slow, steady ticking of a countdown clock. And then there's the third type of dimming, the most baffling of them all. It appears roughly every six years, and for the longest time, nobody could pin down the cause. It didn't match the star's heartbeat. It wasn't caused by dust. It was just 
there, like a cosmic riddle refusing to be solved. Years passed, the mystery deepened, then a radical thought emerged. What if Betelgeuse isn't alone? What if there's a smaller star lurking close by, moving in such a way that every few years it meddles with the light we see from Earth? Computer models ran, simulations played out. If such a star existed, it might weigh between one and two suns, tucked in surprisingly close to the red giant. But finding it? That's another story. Betelgeuse is so monstrously bright it blinds most instruments to anything nearby. Enter the Gemini North Telescope in Hawaii, armed with a specialized high contrast imaging device. Astronomers pointed it at Betelgeuse, and there it was, a faint, shy little star hiding in the glare of the giant. They named it Sawaha. Sawaha is about 1.6 times the mass of our sun and orbits Betelgeuse at a distance of only four astronomical units. Sawaha completes one lap around Betelgeuse every 5.94 years. That's almost a perfect match for the strange six-year dimming cycle that's been haunting astronomers for decades. But wait, there's an even bigger twist. Sawaha isn't a normal star yet. It's what astronomers call a pre-main sequence F-type star, basically a cosmic toddler. It hasn't even switched on its stellar engine yet. Nuclear fusion in its core hasn't started. Imagine two siblings born together, yet one is a wise elder on the brink of retirement, while the other is still a restless child waiting to grow up. That's exactly what Betelgeuse and Sawaha are, born from the same cloud of gas and dust, yet living vastly different lives. Betelgeuse has raced through its life, blazing bright and hot, now teetering near its dramatic finale. Meanwhile, Sawaha is just getting started, or maybe never will. Scientists now suspect Sawaha might never fully ignite into a typical star. It could remain forever stuck in this youthful, dormant state. Looking ahead, the fate of Betelgeuse is both thrilling and sobering. In the next 100,000 years or so, it will likely explode in a brilliant supernova, leaving behind a dense neutron star, a cosmic ghost of what once was. But before that dazzling end, something darker looms. Betelgeuse's immense gravity is expected to pull Sawaha ever closer, swallowing its smaller companion whole. This stellar act of cannibalism might happen within the next 10,000 years, a blink of an eye on the cosmic clock. But don't worry just yet, the show isn't about to start tomorrow. Meanwhile, astronomers eagerly await November 2027, when Sawaha will swing out to its greatest distance from Betelgeuse, giving us a rare, clearer view of this strange celestial dance. As we continue to study this fascinating duo, our understanding of how massive stars live, evolve, and die deepens. Whether Betelgeuse's grand finale happens next week or millennia from now, one truth stands firm. This star is slowly, steadily, marching toward its final act. <laughs> and now, with its mysterious companion discovered, the story only gets richer, more complex, more captivating. That wraps up today's journey into the life and secrets of Betelgeuse and Sawaha. If you enjoyed this deep dive, drop your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear from you.